Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, 3D Math Series, Episode 6, Vectors, Part 6, and we're going to be looking at code today of vectors. So we're going to be writing this in JavaScript because we're sticking with WebGL for most of the things that we'll be doing. And so if this looks different to you in your language of choice, then you can just translate it accordingly and respectively. Okay, so we're just basically going to be having a function here uh, that's going to have different methods on it. And we'll be using this so we can use the new operator in JavaScript to create vectors of variant types, sizes, and whatnot. And so we're just going to be console logging all of this out. And you can see all the outputs that we'll have here. So basically, let's just go through and see uh, some of the methods we come up with. So uh, basically, we have a creation that's just creating the standard object, the empty object. We're going to create it with some values, x, y, and z, and then set them on the object itself. We have a nice little print method that makes it convenient for printing those. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the copy. And basically, if we're given a copy, we're going to overwrite the given uh, operators for this one. Equality, uh, we're going to check the incoming uh, values against the uh, this version's uh, values of x, y, and z. And strict equality uh, in JavaScript to make sure they're truly identical. So let's go ahead and look at each of those real quick. We have uh, the new vector, vec3 here. We have a creation, create with. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create, create a couple different ones and give them some values and print those out. And then compare the two, uh, A and B. So we can see they're not equal. Uh, after we copy, then we're going to go ahead and check to see if they're equal for both strict and regular, and they are. So that's pretty simple stuff. Let's continue on. Uh, we're going to have the zero vector. Uh, so it's just going to be x, y, and z is zero. Uh, we have a negation, which is basically multiplying every single value by negative one. And we'll, we'll go off and show addition two. So you're going to take each value and add uh, the vector of the x, y, and z as well. So you can see uh, the zero vector and then print it off. And then we're going to go ahead and have two vectors here and go ahead and show them. And then add them together and then print it as well. So here's the zero vector, here's the addition, one, two, three, two, three, four, and then there's the obvious three, five, and seven. Negation is actually all the way down to the bottom here, so you can see two, three, four, and negative two, three, four. Let's go ahead and continue on. Subtraction as well, uh, two, three, and four, one, two, and three, and we're going to go ahead and subtract them. Uh, you could see here that we have the x, y, and z is getting subtracted from the incoming value. Scalar multiplication, uh, this is basically the same thing as doing the negation, um, but it's by the, by the scalar that's being brought in. Scalar division, um, we're going to go ahead and go one over that and then we'll basically use the multiplying. Multiplier, note that I'm not checking for divisible by zero, so you probably want to do that in your code at some point. So you can see, multiplying, we're going to multiply these by 2 and then divide by 2 and you can see the totals are correct. Normalization is next. As you uh, can recall, we're basically taking 1 over the magnitude of the squares. So uh, we're going to square root the magnitude and basically as long as we're greater than 0, we're going to go ahead and do this and multiply them by each and that will be each respective x, y, and z value between 0 and 1 because a normalized value is always between 0 and 1. Um, the cross product, we're going to go ahead and do each value for the x, y, and z. We're doing this up here not in line because if we reset each one it wouldn't set the next and uh, subsequent values properly. So this is obviously the formula from uh, the last episode that we had done the cross product on. Uh, where the x value is uh, this is y uh, times the incoming z minus this is z times the incoming y and with y is z and x and x and z and then finally z is x and y and y and x and we can see the cross product of these two is are these values right here um, dot product is just the simple uh, addition of the scalar uh, multiplied by the scalars. Note that these two, the magnitude and 
the uh, dot product and the distance formula all return a scalar, whereas all the rest of them are going to return the object uh, itself. Also notice that we are going ahead and setting these values and overriding them on the actual object. If you wanted to make it so that you're taking in two different vectors or something and then doing this and spitting out a new one, you can, but we're just doing this in line. Um, at any given time, you can do whatever you'd like in your uh, uh, application. So, um, and then you can see there's the magnitude and the distance as well. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, these are going to be most of the uh, things that you'll need at any given time. Obviously, a lot of libraries out there have a lot more functions and functionality and a lot more tests. This was just a quick example of how you can easily and quickly make the uh, a class that you can use in your own uh, trying out and learning things. And then, of course, you know, digging into source code of uh, open source libraries and checking out what they have to offer is always good as well. Uh, so that's it for this episode. If you like what you saw, go ahead and give me a like and subscription. And uh, go to programtil.com and sign up for our newsletter. And uh, I will see you again. Thank you.